Good morning students. Welcome to Leela's tutorial. Today we are going to discuss about the sterilization techniques which is the second topic in animal biotechnology. So what do you mean by sterilization? Sterilization is a process of making any substance free from contamination. Right? So here the sterilization is again classified into physical sterilization and chemical sterilization. So let us see the physical sterilization where again it is classified into four types that is natural sterilization, heat sterilization, sterilization using filters and sterilization using radiation. So let us see what is a natural sterilization process. Natural sterilization process is nothing but making use of the natural resource that is your sunlight. Right? The second one is heat sterilization technique where the heat can be again it can be a dry heat or the moist heat. So here if you are making use of dry heat we call this technique as dry heat sterilization. If you are making use of moist heat we call it as moist heat sterilization or steam sterilization technique. Right? Let us discuss about the dry sterilization first. Right? So in case of dry sterilization mostly we make uh, use of the sterilization technique in order to make free from contamination that is your instruments and the glasswares. Right? So here it is the red hot technique where you are burning the uh, inoculation loops to red hot to the direct flow. The second one is the flaming technique. Again in the flaming technique if it is a glass rod you are not going to show it to the flame directly till red hot. It will break. So in order to avoid that simply you are going to flame it. That means over the flame you are just going to move it. Right? So next, next one is incineration process. In case of incineration here you are making use of the sterilization where you need to discard. That is after the animal biotechnology practical you are going to discard the media or the contaminated media or the used media after incineration process. Incineration is a process of burning the media or burning substance into ashes. Okay? So last one is making use of hot air oven where the temperature is maintained at 170 degrees for 30 minutes or 160 degrees for 60 minutes. So here you can see as the time increases the temperature decreases. Right? This is the dry heat sterilization. Next coming to the moist heat or the steam sterilization process. You can see here the steam that means the water when boils it causes vaporization. Right? So here the cell moist heat sterilization is again classified into three types. That is sterilization below 100 degrees centigrade, sterilization at 100 degrees centigrade and sterilization above 100 degrees centigrade. Right? So if you see the sterilization below 100 degrees, it is nothing but your pasteurization process where you are not allowing the water to boil but you are heating the substances for longer time so that the organisms get inactive. Right? So here the pasteurization temperature is 63 degrees for 30 seconds or 72 degrees for sorry 63 degrees for 30 minutes or 72 degrees for 15 seconds. Then next one is boiling. Right? So at 100 degrees the boiling point of water you are going to sterilize. And the next one is above 100 degrees centigrade where you are going to raise the temperature of the water above 100 degrees centigrade. Right? That is nothing but your normal pressure cooker which you use at home. Here in the lab we make use of autoclave. Where in the autoclave the temperature is raised to 121 degrees centigrade by increasing the pressure to 15 LB for 15 minutes. So this is the two types of heat sterilization process. Let's come to the filter sterilization. So in case of filter sterilization, we make use of different fibers or any membranes and all. So here, if for the sake of sterilizing the liquids or you can say for sterilizing the heat labile compounds, that means the compounds or the nutrient media 
which is very much sensitive to the heat cannot be sterilized using this heat sterilization process. So what they must be done? The here you are going to use the filters in order to avoid the denaturation of proteins due to heat sterilization. Is it clear? So heat labile compounds always must be sterilized using filters. Right? So here it can be use of asbestos like in columns or HEPA filters like in your laminar air flow chamber where the sterilized air will be passed through the HEPA filters or making use of nitrocellulose membranes. So this is mostly used in our labs where the membrane size is 0.2 micrometers. Right? That is less than the size of the smallest bacteria. So here the nitrocellulose membrane can filter out all the organisms or the contaminants present in your prepared media. Right? So next coming to the radiation. Under sterilization using radiation, you have again two types. Ionizing radiation can be used or non-ionizing radiations can be used. For example, in case of ionizing radiations, it is like your alpha, beta, gamma and x rays. So here these rays, what they do? They penetrate into the cell right, and they denature the DNA. Right? So again, if you see the non-ionizing radiations like microwaves, here the microwaves as the temperature increases, right? With the pressure, the temperature will be increased in the microwave because of which the organisms will be killed. Then you have your radio waves, then infrared rays. See here, the infrared rays cannot penetrate into the cell, but here you can go for the surface sterilization process. Next, coming to the UV radiation or the UV rays. Making use of UV rays, again, you can uh, allow the thymine dimer formation, where the thymine dimer will be formed in the DNA of the bacteria, because of which the replication is blocked. Right? In such a way, the ionizing and non-ionizing radiations can also sterilize the microorganisms or sterilize any substance without any microorganisms. Right? Is that clear? So here we are done with the physical sterilization method where you have natural sterilization, heat sterilization, filter sterilization and sterilization using radiation. Right? So now let's move to the next one, the chemical sterilization process. So here in case of chemical sterilization process, the chemical can be in the form of liquid or it can be in the form of gas. Right? So the mostly used thing is the alcohol in the lab that is 70% ethanol. You are going to make use of 70% ethanol for surface sterilization or for other pur purposes. Next it is the use of aldehydes, use of halogens, phenols or any other compounds can be used. Right? Next coming to the sterilization using gases or gaseous sterilization. So here in case of apparatus or media or any surface, you are going to make use of these. Now in case, if you want to sterilize the complete room or complete lab, right? The so complete animal biotech lab has to be sterilized. So what you are going to do? You have to fumigate. You are going to use the fumigation process, right? The fumigation process what fumes you are going to use? The fumes which can inactivate your organisms or the contaminants present in the air. Right? So what you do? You make use of chloroform, formaldehyde or ethylene dioxide. Is that clear? So in chemical sterilization, you have two types. Either you can use the liquid for sterilizing the surfaces and gaseous sterilization for fumigating the lamps. Is that clear? So here it is a complete sterilization technique where you are going to sterilize all the apparatus, media and also the laboratory which is required for your animal cell culture technique. Is that clear? So with this we are done with the sterilization techniques. If you have any doubts in this topic, please put it in the comments. Right? For further uh, videos or further lectures, please subscribe.